We love spending time with family during the holidays, and one of our very favorite ways is on a Christmas cruise. Today we're going to talk to you about the six features of a Christmas cruise, and at the end of the video, tell you how to make the most out of your Christmas cruise vacation. Hi y'all, I'm Jeff. And I'm Becky. And together we're a cruising good time. We love the holidays, obviously here with the Santa hats. We're wearing a Nakatomi Christmas Plaza 1988 shirts. Great Christmas movie, by the way. And we want to talk to you about how we love Christmas cruising. We love the holidays and how they're just so special because you have the family, the house is made up, we get all the decorations out, you got the trees up. People are coming over, great food, great times. It's just a lot of great experiences, and we just love it. Cruising takes that and augments it even more. So the holiday experience on a cruise is just fantastic. We love it, and it also simplifies everything at the same time because we don't have to do all the cooking. We don't have to do all the dishes. We don't have to figure out who's going to sleep where and who winds up on the sofa when we have all the relatives over. It just really simplifies things, and we really love Christmas cruising and how it augments the holidays. So cruising is wonderful for big families to go out and for multi-generations. So you can have very large groups of people. Like we've said, we've seen families, 20 or 30 family members. And, you know, they set down some ground rules, like everybody has plans for what they're doing, Christmas Eve dinner and Christmas dinner. And then they're allowed to do their own thing. So those that like to be more active, go have fun. Those that like to be more laid back, have their planning. Everybody has their space and can do what's right for them. And that really helps from people getting on uh, each other's nerves that instead of it being 30 people in one home. Yep. And people have a fabulous times. You know, sometimes I've been around where sometimes grandparents may be a little bit tired of being around the little ones. They can also take their own space. And the cruise offers terrific activities. One of my favorite cruise moments is when my daughter came up to me and said, Mom, I love you, but would it be okay if I spent time in the kids program today? One thing that we also love about Christmas cruising and how the cru cruise lines make Christmas cruising different from cruising the rest of the year. They really fix up the ship with all the decor. We did a Panama Canal cruise on the Emerald Princess in 2019, right before COVID. And I think I counted, what, 14 or 15 Christmas trees <laughs> on that ship. They were everywhere. They had the piazza made up with uh, garland and everything else. It was just a really nice to have it all decorated up. One of the special things about the Christmas cruise is they're going to offer terrific holiday activities. Yes. One of our favorites is the gingerbread house decorating it competition. Is a lot of fun. So we've participated that three times and just had a terrifically good time with that. Typically, they'll have an ugly sweater contest. Mm -hmm. That's always a lot of fun. We've seen matching pajama competitions for like most festive pajamas. Yes. They have caroling in the uh, piazza a lot or, or even in the theater sometimes. And they'll have some religious services. They'll have uh, uh, the Christmas service. They'll have usually some Hanukkah services. Sometimes they're conducted by a crew member. Sometimes they're conducted by a passenger leading it. But they do have that on board as well. If it's over New Year's, they'll have a big New Year's Eve party. Those are a lot of fun. Yeah, yeah a lot of fun. And a lot of times they'll have one on a, a ship up on the deck if it's good weather and down in the piazza kind of simultaneously. So you kind of got two parties to choose from if the weather's permitting. Yeah. They will offer um, many famous Christmas movies. Yes, that's always fun, you know, because they have the big theaters upstairs. You get the, the movies up there or even in your stateroom. They'll have all the, the classic movies and the, all, all the modern ones, the older ones. A lot of fun. But I think the really big thing for Christmas time and, and all that <laughs> is the one and only Santa Claus has always made an appearance on every cruise ship we've been on on Christmas Eve. And uh, they, uh, the, the bridge will let the, the passengers know when they sight them on the radar and see them coming in. <laughs> it's a lot of fun. <laughs> they do. And so for, for our family, for us, Christmas is about spending time together. So the perfect gift for us yes. is the is a Christmas cruise. 
So we've done it where we've done a Christmas cruise and we've given the gift to our children. Yes. And the last one we did, the gift was our kids, they paid for their own cruises, we paid for ours. And the gift was, is that we all bought the cruise and we're spending time together. Yes, that was that was a really good gift. <laughs> Not only time, but uh, uh, everything else. So that was a it was a really good time. So one of the things, if you're if you have younger children and you want them to have something to open, you can always bring something smaller for them to open on the ship. And you, if you have younger children and perhaps their gifts from Santa Claus may be larger, you can think about creative ways to do that. So perhaps. Santa Claus has visited and left uh, the a tricycle under the tree, and maybe there's a photo of that that's in your stocking that Santa left on the ship. There's a lot of different creative ways to get around. A key component of the Christmas cruising is the itineraries and also the time frame that will work for everybody's schedules, right? So it's or you got getting off work, you may have some, you probably have some school constraints. It could be a high school and a college type constraints. So you're working several schools against each other. And we've literally had a daughter take the final, fly home here, and then the next day we fly out for the cruise uh, to, to go uh, travel on the cruise. So find that time frame you can do. C- Christmas cruises could be seven day, 10 day, 14, probably even longer. Uh, we've done some uh, Panama Canal ones. We've done two in the Caribbean. Uh, there's a lot up and down the Pacific coast of Mexico as well. And then you could get some out of like Patagonia. And obviously for our folks watching uh, in Australia, I'm sure you have a lot of Christmas cruises because in the beautiful summertime you have there at the time of year. So uh, look for itineraries and time frame that you could fit on there. Sometimes the Mexico and Caribbean cruises are handy because a lot of them can be seven days or possibly even shorter. And I do have to say, I love port days for cruising. However, Christmas cruises are my favorite one for sea days because they do offer the best daytime activities. Well, let's talk about a few of the potential negatives on Christmas cruises. There are a few negatives about the Christmas cruise. So one of the negatives about it is that the ship is going to be full because you have a lot of families traveling together and there's going to be just a lot of passengers on board. However, how full the, sh- the ship actually feels will vary from cruise line to cruise line. For many cruise lines, they do a terrific job of managing people and it won't feel crowded and it won't feel like you're waiting in long lines. Another negative of traveling during the holiday time is that everybody's trying to travel then. And so the airports are busier. It's real important to travel a day early for your uh, to catch your cruise so you don't risk missing your ship because of an airline delay or, uh, or you don't, you're on the ship without luggage because luggage didn't make the connection, anything like that. It's always important to travel the day before. During holiday time, it's even more important to travel the day before. Another negative is that it may be more expensive to fly to the port during Christmas time. So how do you make the most out of your Christmas cruise? Well, I think number one is how do you set the tone? I mean, have fun with it. (laughs) I will embark, go through embarkation wearing a Santa hat on a Christmas cruise. So have fun with it. Realize you may not be at home. Things will be a little bit different over the holidays, but have fun with it. Roll with it. and, And it'll be exciting times. Remember, smiling is contagious. That's exactly right. I think for me, it helps if I plan ahead. For instance, if I look ahead at the ship's activities and see that they have an ugly sweater contest, I may decide to pack my uh, ugly sweater. That's right. You know, and bring some games on board. Uh, You know, little card games, Uno or Five Crowns. These are easy to travel with and they're a lot of fun for the whole family to play yeah bring whatever's special for your family there may be uh, games aboard the ship but it's best to bring your own to ensure that you have them another big advantage for having the family on the christmas cruise is that you have enough of people to make private shore excursions economical so when we're in Wiroatan, we did a snorkeling excursion yes. not offered by the ship and it was magical It was just the six of us out on the boat, and we went to sites that the cruise ship didn't offer. It was very fabulous, fabulous snorkeling, and we couldn't have done it any other way. 
And they also took us to, you know, a special, more local food place. So we got to enjoy some local cuisine. For this video, the today's controversial subject is that Die Hard is a Christmas movie. <laughs> so be sure to leave your comments in the, below and give us a like and subscribe and turn on those notifications. Thanks a lot for watching. There is more to come.